right, hello and welcome. Thanks so much for joining us today for our first pre-rival webinar for our undergraduate students. First steps for new international students. Um, my name is Grace Fuller and I serve as the manager of student experience and engagement here at the International Students and Programs Office, ISPO. And I'm also joined by my colleague, Gabby, who I'll let introduce herself. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we hope you're all doing well. Uh, as Grace mentioned, my name is Gabby Hoffman, and I am the Assistant Director of Student Experience and Engagement here at ISPO. We're looking forward to meeting you. So first off, we want to congratulate you on your admittance into UC San Diego, and we are so excited um, to welcome you and help ease your transition as a new Triton. A little bit before we begin, um, so some housekeeping, you'll notice that you are in listen only mode, which means you can hear us, but we unfortunately we can't hear you. Um, so the primary way that we'll interact together today is through our Q&A feature on your Zoom menu bar. So you can utilize that feature to go ahead and submit questions. You will notice that the chat has been disabled for attendees. Um, so Gabby and I might be sharing relevant links through the chat, but again, the primary way that you'll interact with us is submitting questions through that Q&A feature. If for any reason we don't get to your question during today's webinar, you can also reach out to us via icontact.ucsd.edu. And finally, we are recording. So you will actually be able to view this webinar as well as any other webinar recordings at iwebinars.ucsd.edu and click on webinars for newly admitted students. And that will take you and you'll be able to see um, previously recorded webinars as well as register for upcoming web webinars. And just um, a friendly note, that's kind of what the Q&A feature is going to look like. So you can go ahead and submit questions at any point um, during today's webinar, but please do know that we will have some de time dedicated at the end for an open question and answer. Okay, so a little bit about how we'll spend our time together today. Um, so we'll do a brief introduction and overview of the International Students and Programs Office. We'll talk a little bit about the ways our office supports our international student community here at UC San Diego. And then we'll go into um, a little bit about what fall 2020 might, 2022 might look like, um, requesting your visa documents as you prepare to come to UC San Diego, as well as an overview of additional upcoming webinars and resources. And then we'll have our open question and answer session. Okay, so who is ISPO? Who are we? Um, so ISPO at UC San Diego is your one-stop shop for all services and programs for international students. We provide immigration advising as well as non-immigration advising topics to help you understand how to best navigate your program and succeed here. We hope that you'll come visit us. We have 21 friendly faces ready to help answer your questions. And in addition to advising and, and issuing your immigration documents, we also offer a series of events and workshops to support the successful transition of our students to campus and student life. Um, we hope that these events enrich the academic, research, and intercultural experiences of all students at UC San Diego. And a little bit about who are our students, so who are International Tritons? Um, so if you take a look at our fall 2021 snapshot, there are nearly 9,000 international students currently enrolled here at UC San Diego. In addition, we have over 2,000 students on post-graduation employment status, known as Optional Practical Training, OPT, or Academic Training, AT. Each one of you makes a significant contribution to UC San Diego's research and educational endeavors. ISPO helps to support this growing population through services, including presentations like today. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, before I hand it off though to my, to my colleague, um, we just wanna reiterate that ISPO is here along with the entire campus community to offer you a heartfelt welcome to campus. Um, we tend to like to think of ISPO as your home away from home. So we hope that ISPO will, will be a place where you can meet others from around the world, learn from one another, explore your interests, and above all, feel welcome and comfortable. Whatever this next year may look like, ISPO plans to extend the very same warm welcome that we have for so many years, as you can see through some of the images here. And with that, I'll pass it over to Gabby to talk a little bit about your first steps checklist. Thank you, Grace. 
Yes. So hopefully some of you are familiar um, with our website already, but if not, I'm just going to take a quick walk through some of the resources that exist um, on the ISPO website, um, beginning with the first steps checklist. So the first steps checklist, if you go to inewstudent.ucsd.edu, this should be available in your um, uh, Triton checklist when you accepted admission, but you can also go straight there to the link that Grace has put in the chat. This provides various different resources for our newly admitted international undergraduate students, as you can see there, to get started with their visa document request and also go through several other um, checklist items to make sure you get the best start at UC San Diego. So if you click on undergraduate students, this will take you, as you can see here, to the various different steps from requesting immigration documents for, to preparing for arrival and then what to do once you get to UC San Diego. So that first step, of course, is requesting your documents to come and study here as an F1 or J1 student. And you submit that request through what is called the iPortal. That's iPortal.ucsd.edu. Um, again, that link should be in your Triton checklist um, as well. It should take you straight there and give you instructions on how to do so. Um, but you will go into the iPortal um, to request your documents. And you can do this um, after, of course, you've accepted admission to UC San Diego um, and are looking for your F1 or uh, J1 documents. Um, students who are transferring their CVIS record, that is, for example, if you uh, attended or are attending a US, U.S. high school, I know if you are currently in F1 status and you need to transfer your immigration documents over to our school, to UC San Diego, you also need to apply for documents here. So just be aware of that. All right, so applying for your US visa. Once you've gotten your documents through the iPortal, it takes about 15 days to get those documents to you. Once you've submitted a completed application, you are ready to apply for your US visa. So let's go through that process. All right, so first step, of course, getting those visa documents. You can't apply for that visa stamp to enter the United States until you have your Form I-20 if you are applying for the F-1 visa or the Form DS-2019 if you're applying for the J-1 visa. So as mentioned, beginning uh, last month, the iPortal opened to take requests from new students to get their, their um, F1 um, I-20 or their J1 DS-2019. You can go to iPortal.ucsd.edu to log in and request those documents. Within about 15 business days, you should receive your document. If you are applying as an F1 student, you will get that document electronically uploaded into your iPortal account. Um, J1 students still must receive a hard copy of that form, so it will be mailed to you if that is the status you are requesting. Um, just a quick note, most, the vast majority of students, most students come in on the F1 visa. So only um, a small number of students come in on the J1. It's typically for students who are sponsored by their home government, for example, have a home government scholarship who come in on the J1. So just to kind of differentiate the terminology a little bit here. So once you have your documents, you can then book your appointment at your local U.S. Embassy, preferably in your home country. That is going to be the best scenario for you to obtain your visa stamp, um, to um, request entry into the United States this summer or fall. All right, so this is what your visa document will look like, and there are two examples here. I pointed out the first one here um, is for the majority of our students. This is the F1, I should say the I-20 document for the F1 visa. So this um, certificate of eligibility is what is issued to you by our office once you have submitted uh, your request to us, and that request does need to include a copy of your passport page, um, as well as financial support um, to ensure we can issue you a document um, that, showing that you meet the minimum requirements um, to receive a document. Um, for J1 students, this is your DS 2019 here on the right. Uh, this is what it would look like if you were applying for a J1 visa. Um, again, CBIS transfer students, students who are coming from another U.S. school um, and want to transfer the record to us also have to apply for their I-20 within the iPortal. It doesn't just happen automatically. So it's really important to make sure you have that. So looking at these documents in a little bit more depth, let's see, I think if we advance a little bit, it should show you some details. Perfect. So once you have your document, you will see that you're given a CVIS ID. So that ID starts with N00 typically. 
that is the number that you are going to need to book your visa appointment. So make sure you take note of that. Um, on the DS 2019, it's up in the right hand corner of the document. Um, but yes, just make sure that you are aware of that number. This is what you're going to need to book your visa appointment. Um, and I think if we advance a little bit further, I might be able to show some more details. There we go. Um, so this is just uh, a closer look at the documents. And again, to reiterate that um, students wanting to come in an F1 status will be getting their I-20 electronically. This is um, a new allowance that was permitted during the pandemic um, to make things uh, easier for our students. And uh, the Student and Exchange Visitor Program, the SEVP, has made these guidelines permanent, which is fantastic. So that means you can get your, your documents electronically. You don't have to worry about things being mailed to you. Um, unfortunately for our J-1 students, you do still need a hard copy. That's a different um, government agency that runs the J-1 program and they still require a hard copy. So just know that you will have to arrange for shipping, which you can do within your iPortal account to get your document to you. Okay, so that's a quick guide on what your documents look like, what next steps look like. Um, we encourage you and we'll go through um, these additional resources to look at our website on the first steps checklist that I mentioned earlier. There is a reference point that talks about the actual visa application process. Um, and we do have a webinar that goes in detail what the visa application process looks like for our students in a future webinar. So that will be helpful for our students to understand. But if you haven't applied for a US visa before, if you go to the first che step steps checklist, excuse me, um, it will outline the various steps you need to take to book your visa appointment, what fees you need to pay in order to attend your appointment, um, and what items you need to make sure you have for your visa appointment so you're prepared. Uh, so we encourage you for to take a look at that website, view our future webinar that goes into those details. But for now, I'm going to go through some additional resources to help you in these first steps getting started with your, your document requests. So, um, some resources here that are going to be very important for you um, as we are kind of emerging from the hopefully the worst parts of the pandemic these last couple of years. Obviously, there have been a lot of changes, a lot of different um, uh, changes to modality, how courses were taught. Obviously, the university went online for quite some time. However, UC San Diego has come back to basically full-time teaching in person. 95% of classes are in person now. Um, we have a very, very low um, COVID transmission rate on campus, which I'll go over in a couple of slides. Um, so that's wonderful news. But of course, the, as the pandemic has shown us, things can change, right, um, unexpectedly. So we have done our best to put together um, several um, web pages to keep you updated on the pandemic, specifically how it might impact our international students and travel, um, as well as visa issuance, immigration documents, and so forth. So if you go to iupdates.ucsd.edu, there is a lot of information there about how the different pandemic impacts um, have affected enrollment. Um, and if there are changes, which we, we don't anticipate, we hope will not happen. Um, but um, if there are changes, that's where you would go to find out if there are changes to enrollment procedures, any changes to visas, immigration documents, any travel updates, all of that is posted on our iupdates.ucsd.edu um, and also gives FAQs uh, generally about the campus and return to learn. So this is the Return to Learn the University's website dashboard that basically provides uh, information on um, daily um, COVID transmission rates, positivity rates, and things on campus um, so that everyone is informed and can make research-based, science-based decisions about how operations should run. This is open to the entire campus, to students, staff, faculty, so everyone knows what's going on on campus. Um, luckily, UC San Diego throughout the pandemic has had pretty low rates of transmission. We've, we've taken a science-based approach and have pivoted um, and modified things if rates started to go up. Um, but right now, things are, are looking really, really good. Um, you can see rates are quite low. As of, uh, looks like yesterday's data, 
Um, there have been six students residing on campus who tested positive for COVID, eight students residing off who tested positive, and zero campus employees who tested positive in the last seven days. So it's a very low percentage of positive cases right now. Um, you can, again, monitor this by going, ret going to returntolearn.ucsd.edu um, just to get a sense if you want to have an opportunity to see what the campus operations look like, what um, health case sort of cases look like on campus. Um, what is also great about the Return to Learn website is that it gives you uh, up-to-date information about health guidelines on campus, including masking mandates, where it is still mandated, where it is optional. Um, it also gives information on the COVID-19 vaccine mandate, which is required for all students coming into the university. Um, we do have a future webinar dedicated to the vaccine requirements, so do know that that's coming. Um, but it's a great resource to learn about the pandemic and how um, it impacts day-to-day -day life at UC San Diego and how you can be prepared. And some additional links here. Um, again, the INU student website, I, I highly encourage you to start there and go through the checklist. This will give you a lot of great information to get started um, with the paperwork and the visa process. Um, of course, for um, any kind of new travel um, uh, updates, if there are any restrictions, hopefully not, that are put into place, those can be found on the I on the travel.state.gov website, um, but we also um, provide guidelines and information on our website, itravel.ucsd.edu, that lets you know um, about current, any sort of current travel restrictions, but also how to be prepared to travel to the United States. Uh, the usembassy.gov. Um, this uh, website gives you information on um, how long visa wait times are in your home country. So you can actually go to usembassy.gov and type in your nearest consulate or embassy in the search bar. Um, it will tell you how long the wait time is for a visa right now. So that's a really helpful tool. Uh, studyinthestates.dhs.gov. Um, this is the um, website of the Student Exchange Visitor Program that governs the F1 program. So it gives information on how the F1 program is running, if you have any um, questions or need resources about um, the F1, um, if you are interested. Um, and also cbp.gov. Um, this is the Customs and Border Protection website. Um, this, these are the individuals who basically check your passport when you come into the United States, and they provide updates um, on any travel restrictions that might come into effect. Um, they also, on this particular link here, talk about the um, COVID vaccine requirements that are uh, mandated for entry into the United States. So it's really important you check those requirements because it could impact your ability to get on a flight to the United States. So make sure you're checking that so you know about uh, vaccination requirements. And then kayak.com. Um, this is just a site that we found a lot of our students use during the pandemic um, that provided really good up-to-date information on uh, which countries had travel restrictions um, and which uh, flights were sort of restricted to various different countries, including the U.S. And it was it was a little bit more up-to-date. So this is useful in case you're ever wondering if things hopefully, you know, don't, but if they do um, make a turn in the pandemic, you can use these resources. Now, with all of that information out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and pass it back to my colleague, Grace. Thanks so much, Gabby. Um, so we're approaching the end of our webinar, but I did also want to highlight different ways for you to get engaged during your time at UC San Diego. So first, I'm going to start off with I programs, and those are our ISPO signature programs. Um, so I'll kind of briefly go over each one mentioned here. So our English in Action program is an English conversation program where students can practice their English conversation and pronunciation, fluency skills. Um, you get matched with a native English speaker to meet weekly through the academic year. Intercultural Social Hour is um, kind of what it sounds like. So it's a laid back environment where our students can connect, um, play games, get to know different people. That's actually hosted by international peer coach and that happens peer coaches and those occur monthly throughout the academic year. Our ISPO chats are typically an opportunity to meet with ISPO leadership um, and kind of ask any questions folks have regarding um, different changes that might be happening either at ISPO specifically or at the UC San Diego campus as a whole and how that might impact our international student population. Um, I'll highlight the, our international peer coaching program in more detail in a moment. 
Um, but iTable is our basic needs program, um, so dedicated to food security. Let's Talk is our collaboration with Counseling and Psychological Services. So it's um, dedicated to mental health and well-being, and it's in um, partnership with our ISPO CAPS liaison, Dr. Rena Scholl. And Triton Truckers is our collaboration with um, recreation. So we partner with recreation to do different trips in the San Diego area. So whether that's maybe kayaking La Jolla Cove or hiking Cows Mountain, um, there's a number of different opportunities to get our students just to explore our beautiful backyard um, and hopefully help you feel like this is your new home away from home. So you can learn more about any one of these programs at iprograms.ucsd.edu. Another really popular website for our students is our iEvents calendar. So our iEvents calendar is a live calendar. Um, so it's populated throughout the year, but by not only our office, ISPO, um, but also different like campus offices and then our student orgs. Um, our student organizations or clubs. And so there's always something to do. I know that many students will bookmark this website and whenever they're curious of like, hmm, I wonder what's going on. Um, they'll pop, hop over to iEvents to see what they might wanna get more involved in. So this is a great resource for our students. And a little bit more about the International Peer Coaching Program. Um, so our international peer coaches are dedicated specifically for our first year international students here at UC San Diego. Um, so international peer coaches are assigned to each college. So you would meet with the IPC of your college um, to support our international first year undergraduate students during their first year. So um, as you transition, it can be a big transition, especially if this is potentially your first time attending um, a US education institution. And so your peer coaches are there to really just kind of like walk you through that journey. And you can ask them questions related to your academics, but you can also ask them a number of questions. Um, so whether that's just in, in relation to like cultural adjustment um, and to life outside the classroom, um, they're really here for you to just kind of be that person where you can ask all of those questions too. So you, if you would like to sign up to be a part of the peer coaching program, I would highly recommend it. Many of our students um, find this program really helpful for them. And the website is ipeercoaching.ucsd.edu. Okay, and this is a program that you can actually um, start getting involved in right now. So the Global Ambassador Program, or GAP, is a summer long peer mentorship program designed to assist incoming undergraduate international and out of state students. Um, so we hope that by being involved in this program it helps students acclimate to a new environment and just make a smoother transition into university life at UC San Diego. So GAP mentors are continuing students that provide friendly support in order to engage our undergraduate non-resident students. Um, so when you fill out this form as a GAP mentee, you can kind of choose um, like what you're hoping for from your mentor. So maybe that's a mentor who is also an international student, potentially from the same region as you. Um, but maybe it's a California student because you're curious about, you know, what life in California is like and, and making some American friends. Um, it could be a mentor with the same major as you or perhaps in the same college. Um, so you can, when you fill out the application, we'll take into account all that information and then we'll do our best to match you with a mentor um, that you've expressed in, in your preferences via the application. So to find the mentee application, you can go ahead and head to gap.ucsd.edu. And again, um, that application is open now. So you can sign up to be a GAP mentee. And that's one way that you can already start to get engaged um, during your time here at UC San Diego. Okay, and finally, we hope that you will connect with us. So we are very active on social media. Um, we, our handle across all platforms is at ispo.ucsd. Um, and one thing that I like to highlight that's kind of fun is that we have actually um, a UC San Diego Instagram filter. And so we designed this specifically to help celebrate our new Tritons joining our community. Um, so if you go to our Instagram and you go to our filters, um, you can find the UC San Diego filter pack. So if you explore that, we hope that you'll tag us and we'd love to reshare um, and help you celebrate. All right, so a little bit about upcoming webinars. 
Um, so like Gabby mentioned, on April 19th, we'll have a webinar dedicated specifically to applying to your US visa. Um, so that kind of goes into more detail there. On April 26th, we'll have our um, partners from Housing, Dining, and Hospitality to talk a little bit about on-campus operated housing. We'll also have partners to talk about off-campus housing, as well as different like, resources that might be relevant to you. On May 5th, we'll talk about student health, so different insurance and immunization requirements for international students. Uh, May 17th, campus safety. May 19th, finances and student accounts. And May 24th, um, student life and getting involved on campus. So again, you can register for all upcoming webinars as well as watch any previous webinar recordings at iwebinars.ucsd.edu. And you'll click on webinars for newly admitted students. Okay, yes. So um, right now you can begin requesting your immigration documents um, for your student visa. So you'll do that through iPortal. Then like I mentioned, um, throughout April, we'll have um, some of our upcoming webinars into May. As I'm sure many of you know, May 1st is the deadline to accept your admission. And then we're so excited to welcome our students at new international student orientation in September. And you can learn more about that at iorientation.ucsd.edu. Okay, so that covers the majority of our um, presentation for today. And now we're going to move into our open and question and answer. Um, so if you have any questions, I encourage you to submit that question um, in the chat and we'll go ahead and take a look at it. Um, but Gabby, I know that you were able to type the answer, but I'm wondering if you could maybe um, verbally highlight this as well. So when filling out the I-20 application, we have a student who included um, their middle name, their mother's maiden surname, instead of only the first name on the I-20 application. And is that all right, or will that need to be fixed? Yeah, that's a good question. So, um, so that everyone is aware, when we issue your I-20 document, um, when we fill in your name information, that information is taken directly from your passport. So however your name appears on your official passport, the name order and everything, that's how it will appear on your I-20. Um, if the name order is different or um, you know, there's a discrepancy between um, maybe what was on a previous I-20 if you transferred um, or you know, if, if you have, if a name is missing um, in your UC information, um, at UC San Diego, but it, it does appear on your passport, we will reach out to you to let you know, um, you know, hey, this is the situation, we noticed this difference, we just want to inform you that we have to put down legally what is on your passport um, so that you know how to proceed. And, and you do want to make sure those names match. Um, it just leads to fewer complications down the line uh, when applying for, say, um, social security number, um, if you're hired on campus for a job, you want to make sure that your name that's in the university's database matches what is on your passport. Um, so if we reach out to you and let you know, we'll, we'll provide steps on how to update your name if you need to in the university system, uh, but do know that communication will happen. All right, so we don't have any further questions at this time. Um, oh, actually one just came in. So um, uh, our question is perhaps more of an admissions question, but how difficult is it to switch to a capped major if you were admitted undeclared? Um, so that will be a, potentially a better question for your college advising and your department advising. Um, so I believe that most of our students can ask those questions via the virtual advising center, vac.ucsd.edu, um, to speak a little bit more and reach out to your college about um, what, it, what that process might look like and different steps you can do to be in a better position. Um, and so with that, we will wrap up today's webinar, um, but we know, we hope that this kind of just puts different topics um, on your mind in terms of things that you might be curious about or have more questions about. Um, and then again, we will have a series of future webinars where you can ask additional questions. If any questions come up in the meantime, you are more than welcome to reach out to us at inewstudent at ucsd.edu. So that's our email ad address specifically for our new students. Um, and until then, we will 
hope to communicate with you. And if not, see you at our next webinar. So thank you. Have a great rest of your day, whether it be morning, afternoon, or evening where you are. And we hope to see you next time. Congratulations again.